Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate your presence in my channel. I want to batch cook today. I want to batch cook simply because the kids are coming for the holiday and it's a an hassle trying to balance motherhood house chores and also cooking three meals a day that is a lot so i decided to cook these meals so that they can run maybe a week or more for them to save me time to go to the kitchen all the time they want to eat something so i'll start this is lunch time i'll start with jollof rice i love jollof rice it's a western delicacy I've tried making it like twice and each time it comes out better and the flavors are just amazing. I'll use the red pepper. Uh, the main ingredients should be just color, the red color. Yeah, so I'll use a uh, red pepper. I'll just align it on my tray, bake it, bake uh, the pepper, bake the tomatoes as well as the onions and the garlic. I love this sweet red pepper. It, uh, it's so aromatic and it's sweet as well. I'll be baking these ingredients until they have a charred texture on them so that whenever we are making the jollof rice, it can get the smokiness. Yeah, some little bit of a smoky taste on it. That is uh, what I want to achieve. So that is why I'm going to bake mine until they get a char texture. I'm also using this garlic. The reason why I went for this organic garlic is simply because this is so aromatic and it's very strong. That is why I prefer it. So I'll just uh, cut it open like that and then I'll drizzle a little bit of oil to avoid uh, burning. Then also I'll be using some red onions, a few, like three or four of them. I'll also include them in this dish. To achieve the best jollof rice, you need good rice and I decided to go with sunrise basmati rice. I prefer this rice because it doesn't stick together whenever you make even pilau or biryani. So this is the kind of rice I'm going to use in making my jollof rice and I'll be soaking this rice. The reason why I'm soaking this rice is uh, so that it can be tender and doesn't take long to cook. So I've washed until the water is clear. I've washed like five times. So I'll let it soak until the time comes when I want to use it. Here I have some uh, chicken thighs. I love chicken thighs. And the reason why I went for chicken thighs, it's because they have different flavors compared to some parts of the chicken. So I'm also going to defrost these, wash them, Add in a little bit of ginger, a little bit of turmeric. I'm adding the spices so that I can boil this, these spices with the chicken so that we can get flavorful broth from it. And then I'm adding in garlic powder and onion powder. These two are just amazing when it comes to aromas and flavors as well. I'm also using some garam masala. I love garam masala, but garam masala goes well with beef as well as chicken. I'm also adding in some curry powder and then I'm going to add in this cube. It's chicken cube. Uh, initially, I was to use uh, a dish. It's a boron. Yeah, it's a boron spice, but I wasn't able to lay my hands on it. So I decided to substitute that with this and I've added in a little bit of salt. I'm going to add in onions for extra flavors. I'm going to cook this for 15 minutes because I don't want my chicken to tear apart. I want it intact. And these are done. You can see they have a char texture on them and that is what I really wanted so that I can get a very smoky jollof rice. I'm going to blend this until we get a very smooth puree. The base that I'm going to use is just oil. I'm not going to use water to blend this uh, mixture.
At this point, the chicken is cooked and it's firm as I want it so that whenever I'm going to fry it, it doesn't tear apart. I'm going to remove it from the broth and put it inside that place so that it can drip extra uh, juices that it has. I'm saving up this broth so that I can use it later to make the jollof rice. So let me just put it aside and then we'll start making uh, the rice now. So I'm going to use this pot. I'm using this white pot. If you have a nonstick, uh, you are good to go with it because nonstick really does well when it comes to jollof rice but I'm going to use my stainless steel because I'm still used to it it does make my pilau so I, I trust that it's still going to work so I'm going to put in the puree inside there and then I'm going to give it a good mix because the the, the ingredients that we did use we did bake so they are completely cooked they ha they don't have any raw taste so we don't need to overcook them i'm going to add a little bit of oil this dish calls for a lot of oil but i'm not going to use a lot of oil that can irritate so i've added a little bit of oil i have my own spices i don't have the jollof rice spice but i believe this can also give the flavors i've used turmeric i've used cumin powder i've used uh, uh, garam masala i've used the onion and garlic powder i've also used uh, bay leaves and some uh, mixed uh, dried herbs and then still i'm going to use the chicken cube because this really gives good flavors when it comes to jollof rice so i'm going to mix everything well until they are well incorporated i'm going to cover and then this is going to cook for 15 minutes. Yes, 15 minutes so that it can darken a little bit. So on the other side, I'm frying the chicken. I'm starting with the onion. The onion is just to give in some flavors on the oil so that the chicken can absorb the flavors. So I'm going to add in my chicken, cook this, uh, fry the chicken until it is golden brown. After 15 minutes, this is done and I want to give it a good mix before I can bring in the rice. The soaked rice, the reason why I did soak the rice is just to fasten the cooking process of this jollof rice. Remember, we don't use a lot of water in the jollof rice uh, like we would use in pilau. So we cook it in that puree. And if the rice is starchy, it's going to mess up. So you and you will it will really give you a struggle and your uh, rice, your jollof will come out uh, very soggy. So I decided to wash mine like five times until all the starch uh, is over. And then I did soak it. Now, after that, drain the water and then I've used the, uh, the rice to make uh, the dish that we want. Then I'm going to use this chicken uh, broth that I had saved. This is what you need. You don't need plain water. So this is what I'm going to use. Just a little bit just to uh, help that steam up. And then I'm going to cover with the foil. Lower the heat up to the lowest point. Uh, that is the kind uh, of heat that we are going to use to cook this rice. Because jollof rice can only cook with steam. Then I'm covering that with a foil then with the lid again to make sure that the steam is retained so that it can cook the rice slowly so on the other side the chicken is done i'm going to remove that chicken from the oil and put it aside after some time like i gave this rice 20 to 25 minutes i couldn't like uh, approximate the time but in my mind i was very sure that at this point now it's done like look at that that rice just came out perfect and it looks so amazing like i love the outcome every time i make jollof rice i perfect it and i love it so i've added in some butter if you don't have butter you can add in margarine you can add in prestige but i did use butter on this rice just to retain the moisture in that rice we don't want to have it too dry see that see that it looks so delicious i love how it came out i love the colors i love the mild spiciness that it comes with the flavors of the peppers and the smokiness from the ingredients that we did roast is just amazing look at how it did turn out and i did enjoy this i did not add any sauce like i took it like that and it was so delicious so we have the goat meat over here it's almost done and i was uh, steaming the 
butternut so I want to make it into a puree because it's ready so I let it cool down as I prepare something else is a mix of uh, liver and a mix of liver and the kidneys i was still getting the name i wasn't getting the name so it's the liver and the kidney so i'm going to wash this today i'm washing i'm not using milk to soak but you can soak with milk i only washed it so i want to put some spices my spices i have this is garam masala i have garlic i have onions i also have some turmeric curry powder so these are the ones i'm going to use i had run out of my curry powder so i went for it still at chespal i told you chespal has amazing spices the aroma is retained so this is curry powder a little bit generous and then i'm using this is uh, turmeric this is onion powder and then this is garlic this is garam masala and then some salt yeah i'm using my hands then i'm going to give it a good mix So I'll cover this for some time as I cut some ingredients. Let it sit for like 15 minutes as the meat gets all the flavors from the spices and then we shall prepare it. So I'll go ahead and uh, prepare the rest of the ingredients. I need lots of onions because there's a lot of frying that will be going on. I also need this because I want to make some soup. I also need some corn, some coriander. It's, it has been in the fridge for more than three weeks. Then we have some green pepper. I also have some more corn. And this I'm going to make salad. Of course, I'm going to keep some salad for a quick uh when i want to make salad when i want to take any meal with salads i don't have to trouble myself i just grab the salad so to begin with i'm going to dice this corn first i love this corn and then i will boil it i will actually steam it i won't even boil it i will steam it i prefer things when they are steamed this can come in handy during breakfast, so that is why um, I prefer corn. So let me get a steamer, the one that I use to make the butternut. I have limited space, so I'll put them there. This corn is very sweet, and your children can actually tolerate this more and we are headed to the holidays the, the, the schools are closing so it's good to have readily available foods so that you don't get stressed whenever kids yell around that they are hungry so this one I bought uh, some time back I haven't used it so I'll have to use it today. So the corn is done. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of salt. This corn is sweet corn. So it doesn't need much. I'm going to cover it. And let them simmer slowly. No hurry. So. This water to steam my butternut. And so I put them there. You know, there's no, there's no cooking when that's a mess. So I have this paper. I'm going to be putting all, everything that needs to be put away. 
So let me see me and here first. So I'm adding a little bit of the oil because I want to stir fry them first. Once the oil is heated, I'm going to add in the liver. It's a bit watery, so I think I'll have to reduce the heat. Then put them in. My corn is done as this one cooks. I'm going to put this aside. I want to make the stew, that is the goat meat stew. I will remove them from the steamer so that I can put them aside for them to cool down. Some oil for the stew. Add some onions. I will keep turning this until it's nicely cooked, but I'm gonna cover it. So once the onions are brown, once they are brown, I'm going to add a little bit of turmeric, garam masala, and curry powder. 
then give it a good mix. I love infusing my spices as I always say in oil or after I've fried the onions. So I'm going to let the onions uh, absorb all the flavors from the spices before I can add in the next ingredients. This is still cooking. It's, it, has, it's, it has released its own juices and at least some juices from the spices. I'm going to let it cook until it dries a cup on its own. As everything cooks, I've, I've sliced my radish. This is the white radish. I want to boil some soup with it. This uh, tastes so good. I don't know if you've ever tried, but try it. I'm going to add some more things in it so that it can make it so, so flavorful. I'm not going to leave it like that, so I'll add it into my pot and then add just plain water and salt and a little bit of the spices that I may want. But I think I'll add the spices later, not now, after the radish is a little bit boiled. So there it is, I'll bring it to a boil. As for this, I think they have gotten all the spices in them and they are nicely golden. I will add in a little bit of tomato, pu uh, tomato paste, not puree, tomato paste, then mix well. This are uh, uh, cooked and uh, these ones I steamed and then I did blend them. So I'm using those ones. Because they are steamed, they are already cooked, but I'll just have to cook them a little bit to also get the flavors from the spices. So the tomatoes are, are cooked. I'm gonna add in the goat meat. I had boiled it. I love goat meat for a stew. This is very, very delicious. I like it when my goat is overcooked for the children, so I'm adding in the broth, and then the rest of the broth I'm going to add here. I'll show you what I'll put in there after adding that. So I'll mix this. Then add here some salt. I'm gonna mix that. In here, I will add a little bit of potatoes, not all of them. And then now, I let this boil for some time. I love coconut, so I'll add a little bit of coconut cream. I'm using only one pack. Give it a good mix. This really tastes so delicious. If you make some rice, more so for the kids, this is very tender for them. So I will cover this and then we will cook this one. As you can see all the juices are gone and we are remaining with only the, the liver and the, the kidney. So I will add in the onions. Add in a little bit of Greek yogurt. This is going to taste amazing. Ooh. It's gonna taste amazing. Mosa, when you want to take ugali and some bread, this is going to taste so good. So 
If there is one spice that will go well with the liver or other stews, if you want some tanginess and anything a little bit tangy or sour, I'm using the salt and vinegar seasoning. This tastes amazing. I've used it several times. In as much as I've never used it on my dishes here, but it tastes so good. So for some tanginess, I've added that. Remember we balanced the salt from uh, marinating this liver and uh, kidney, so we don't need any more salt. And this is how we are not adding any tomatoes. So for some garnish, I'm adding some pepper. Then I'm going to give it a good mix. See that? This is delicious, my friend. Very, very delicious. Also garnish this as well with some pepper and some coriander. And we are good to go with this too. So I'll uncover it, let it cool before I can transfer it. This one as well is done, so I don't want the peppers to overcook, so I'll turn off the heat. We are remaining with this. This is what I'm going to wait for. So the corn is cooled down, and this is how it looks like. I want to pack it in the peppers. I want my broth to be a little bit creamy. As you can see, it's a little bit creamy, and I think the potatoes are also cooked. So the next thing I'm going to add in here is... I'm adding the sliced beef macon. Yeah, it's the beef macon. You see the small sliced ones? Because these ones are going to cook faster, so that is why I'm adding them to get the beefy flavors and also uh, enhance the flavors of the radish. That is how I love making them. Though sometimes I just use the bones to actually make this uh, radish soup so i'll add this so whenever you want to take maybe uh, some rice dish you can actually grab this soup and take it along see that yeah at least that is how i use my by my beef macon you can uh, use it for breakfast but for me i'll use it here then now we are going to flavor this some more since we have salt already in here i'm adding uh, some garlic powder garlic powder actually gives this good flavors i'm adding in a little bit of onion powder and then finally the ingredient of the day the vinegar and salt mixture just so the next thing I'm going to do is garnish this with some onions for good good flavors and this soup is done this looks delicious so these ones when they cook this is how they look like and they are cooked because they are very thin they can easily cook faster so I'm making the legumes I want to make the chickpeas with the chickpeas I'm not using uh, much so I'm adding in the onions because there are a lot I'm going to add lots and lots of onions garlic powder and then I'm using the a little bit of garam masala a little bit of turmeric some curry powder as well because these are legumes, that is why I'm using curries. So I'll mix this and also let the onions get all the flavors of the spices before I can add in anything else. After a minute or two, I'm adding in now the paste. That is tomato paste. I'm not using any tomatoes for this. I'm only using this paste over here for just add some color on the chickpeas and some little bit of tanginess. Next, I'm adding in the chickpeas. Then I'm going to mix this well. Okay. 
I'm going to add in a little bit of water for some uh, soup. Not too much because we want this to be thick. Give it a good mix. And then I let this boil for like 10 minutes. So with this one, since the onions are browned and the garlic, I'm adding some carrots, three medium sized, I've diced them, then I'm going to mix this well. With this one, I'm using turmeric, a little bit, and then some curry powder, that's all for that. Give it a good mix. Add some salt for taste. I'm actually making beans, so they are frozen. I'll let them just sit here. They'll just be frozen. Add some water. I'll cover this. Then they'll just defrost and then I'll mix them. The chickpeas are done. They are nicely cooked. So I'll just stir them. Coconut cream. Now this is just a curry and I want some coconut in there. So I'll give it a good mix. And this is done a little bit of with pepper and coriander for color. So the heat did help this to defrost. I'm going to add in the coconut cream. I love coconut cream because it thickens the broth of anything that you want to make like the curries, the legumes. So that is why I love it and I love the flavors of the coconut in my beans, in all my like things like dengu. So this looks delicious. I'm going to garnish it and then um, put it in the containers. So one spice that I can never forget is the Greek fenugreek powder. I love it in my beans. So I will add that. It gives good aromas as well and flavors too. It smells amazing. It smells amazing. Then some garnish with pepper and coriander. Give that a mix. Uh, turn off the heat and that will be it for this one. I want to start making chapatis and lately I change brands. I don't mind the kind of flour that I'm using to make chapatis. I've come to realize that the way you need your dough determines the kind of chapati you are going to get. So it's never about the brand. So I've decided that I'll be using any brand that I come across so long as I get to knead the dough the way it's supposed to be kneaded. So I'm adding in the puree and then I'm going to mix well, add in a little bit of oil and salt. No sugar in my chapatis as you all know because my chapatis are meant for stews and even if they were meant for tea, still I would not add sugar in it. These days flowers come fortified so you don't need to add any sugar. So I'll mix that well until I bring all the flour to the center and knead the dough for 8 minutes until it's nicely soft.
there are days I'll cover my door to rest for a while. There are days I won't cover. I'll just go straight into making chapati. But this day, because I have a lot of time at hand, I decided to just cover it. Let it rest until the time I want to start making the chapatis. <music> The dough has been resting for a while and I think now it's ready. I'm going to uh, shape it into smaller balls. Then I'm going to roll it out, apply a little bit of oil. Then you'll just see how I make my chapatis to be layered and also soft. I'm done with the chapatis. I want to make some sausage rolls for breakfast. I have some puff pastry that I did make last week. Puff pastry leads a lot of patience and also some perseverance. I'll bring in the recipe sometime later, not today. So 
I'm going to use these to make pas uh, puff pastries. This puff pastry, I made it like, uh, let's say two weeks. And this took me three days to make. I'll show you the next time the recipe. It really takes a long time to perfect this. So I will show you that recipe sometime later. For today, let's uh, make them. So I have one over here. My kids love this and they love it when I make it. But I love uh, frying my sausage first. Just shallow frying them before. These are just bites, not even sausages. Give this a good egg wash. 